Hi everyone and welcome to part one of Willow's three-part series and uh, today was block-in so we covered the whole canvas with value color you can watch me do that stroke by stroke you can find this um, uh, tape on YouTube and Uscreen however part two and three will exclusively be on Uscreen you can find that address for Uscreen down below and uh, with that, let's get started with today's painting. Okay, bye-bye. Hello everyone and welcome to part one of Willows, part one of a three-part series. I'm George Call, here to um, go stroke by stroke here on how to develop this, uh, this painting. Uh, this time of year, being in Colorado, um, it's, uh, we've got a lot of snow on the ground. This one was taken a little earlier. But I'm going to um, see about making this foreground a little bit more interesting because in the reference it, uh, it just looks kind of dull. And I have some ideas on how to make that interesting. I see over in the right there's some hints of snow, so I, I might be bringing in some some snow in that foreground. Okay, here's my thoughts on this. I want to try to say how do I start this and uh, how do I build on a foundation? Where do I find uh, some foundation strokes? Because it's kind of all over the place, this reference. But what I think I could do to make this simplified for for my thinking and my process, and perhaps for you also, is to, when I look at the reference, I see two lower limbs that kind of bow down, one on the left and one on the right. I see these center guys sticking up, and it's all built on kind of a, oh, kind of a, an edge of a stream. This is the um, area over by the uh, Big Thompson River that goes along our very nice thing called river walk here through town and uh, out here to the west side and east side of town. So that's what I'm going to build on. Those are going to be some of my first strokes. I'm starting with uh, my basic palette of blue, red, yellow, Naples, uh, cold gray, which is here, and I have uh, two siennas. I have raw sienna, bird sienna, of course my beloved Viridian, my slop white here in this pile left over from last week, and my pure white here. Over here on the left is just some dried up paint that I had from last week, and I didn't get to it in time, so I'm going to have to get some acetone on there to get that cleaned up here. So apologize that the palette isn't quite as clean as I like it to be. So keep your palette clean. Do what I say, not what I do. And uh, we'll get started. Okay, so it looks like I've got a 10, a 6, these are flats. I've got a filbert here, which looks like about a 4, and I have a 2 flat. I'm going to start with the 2 and uh, draw some lines, some foundation lines with some gray. So I'm going to go some burnt sienna, ultra blue, and some slop white. I'm going to add some raw sienna in there. And it makes for nice, nice warm color. All right, let's get started. So where am I going to put those foundation lines? It looks like the bank is about a third of the way up. So I'm going to put this, that's my foundation line. I think it's, I made it a little too low. So I brought it up and here, somewhere in the center area, are these major trunks. And then there's kind of a bow here. See this bow on the right? And then there's a bow on the left. 
We have more trees coming up here, trunks. But these are my major guys right in here. And then I've got some major darks down in here. Now when you're making these trunks, what I do is kind of start and stop, at least in this point. I'll probably cover most of these up anyway. And you see, I, I'm not doing these long, straight things. I'm making directional changes in many places. And that seems to be the way I can... Seems to be more branches on this, on the right side showing than on the left. But there is some sky holes coming through. Let me get a little bit more blue here, a little bit of burnt sienna. Burnt sienna, blue. And there is one or two big guys, branches coming through. And you see I am concentrating on him. And I'm going to concentrate on these lower guys that I initially talked about. Alright, that's our foundation. Okay, let's darken my mixture up a little bit with some burnt sienna and some ultra blue. A little bit of red. Some viridian to kill the red. And let's get some of these darks in that I see on the bank. be a lot of dark over here on the left. Looks like a few bushes down here or some sort of vegetation. And I'm going to have some coming in this way also. I think that's vegetation in that reference. And then I have a horizon something, looks like a horizon somewhere coming through here. And some dark there. Okay, those are foundation lines. I'm going to get back and take a look and see how we're doing on that. All right, let's clean these this little brush so I don't ruin it. And uh, pick up my mixture and stick it over here, see how much I have and see if I can use it later. Oh, I forgot my garbage can here. There we go. Put that close by. I'm using my paper towels to clean my palette, palette knife. All right, so next mixture. So looks like we're going to have a warmer color up here and a cooler color down in the lower section. So let's get those two things right. So we'll go warm, I'm sorry, cool, warm, and we'll get the sky in, which would be cool, in here somewhere. That's what we want to do for a block in today and get this thing covered in part one. Uh, in all parts of the canvas to get some feeling of, you know, are we in the right neighborhood for, for values? 
So you say, my God, there's a lot going on here. Do you paint it uh, yellow? Do you paint it green? I squint down and I just try to get kind of a kind of a warm green, if that makes sense. So let's make a blue. Let's make a green and yellow, which is way too bright. See, and then let's add some raw sienna to it. Raw sienna. Raw sienna. And I think we're getting in the right neighborhood. Let's see what happens when we add some slop white to it. Oh, I put too much in, too much white. Let me see what it looks like here. Not too bad. I'll take some of that darker color we started to draw with. And see if that does it. Kind of gets it back in the olive a little bit. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to make a lighter version of it right to the side by adding white off to the side. All right, let's get uh, old number 10 out. And just loosened it up with a little bit of turp in it, dried it out. Still a little too dry, just a touch of turp to loosen it just a little. I'm going to add some burnt sienna. I'm sorry, raw sienna. I think I have to go lighter. So I'm adding some slop white. There we go. That's the, that's the ticket. What I'm doing is looking at the reference and asking myself where the tree starts and ends or where these canopies end. I see there's some sky holes up in here. You see, you sure are losing a lot of your limbs. Well, I said I was going to lose them. Hopefully I can keep some of these boulder guys that I've got in here. And I think I've got a canopy up in here more. And here. Now, when we drew these uh, the right and left droopers right here, these guys, you can see there's kind of a division line between this value and the value down below, it's a little darker. So I'm going to go to the more of the olive side of this mixture and get some of the darker in here. I know there's some above too, so I'll put a little bit of this up above. It's a lot easier to just paint trees in the summertime when it's all solid and you have these nice green, green yellows and stuff like that, but we don't have that luxury here in the fall and winter here in Colorado. Lost my image, excuse me. And let me carry that off to the left there. And I need some yellow on this side, or the, the lighter version of this mixture. And I'm going to put that right in here. I added some more white to the raw sienna side. I don't think that's the right color, but it's the right value. And at least I got one out of two. And I can work this later. Let me just get a sense on this lighter side up. See, I'm getting a lot of white here on the raw sienna side. And I'm going to add some Naples. And 
see if I just want to experiment a little bit with some of these lighter values. Probably have to go even lighter. I'm going to add a little yellow to it and some more white. Naples. And I'm doing that because, well, I've got this mixture, I might as well get it done. We'll probably spend more time doing this on part two, which would be tomorrow. I don't do these in one day. I, part one I do on Mondays, twos I do on Tuesday, and the third one I do on Wednesdays. Just gives me time to think, download these to Uscreen or YouTube, wherever it's going, and Don't I need to reestablish some of my darks wherever they may be. Okay, so that gives you some idea of what to do with that canopy. I think we're about right in the area of placement on the canvas and value so far, the underneath value. So with that being done, I feel confident to go down below here. So, let's do that. I'm going to mix all these together and see if I can use them down below by adding some gray and some bird sienna. Gray. And on one side of this mixture, I'm going to add some slop white, which would probably not be where we're at quite yet. And a little bit more. I'm going to add some burnt sienna and some raw sienna right up in here. That may be too dark. Let's try to loosen that down just a little bit. Basically I have a, a dark, medium, and a light right here. So, basically I used what I had left over with the tree stuff and I used burnt sienna, raw sienna, and white. Let's start with the nice gray that we have. You can see there's some of this kind of leading into the painting right in here. Right in this area. And then the darker stuff is on either side. I know there's streaks of light coming through, and I don't think I have a dark enough value here. Let me see. You know, you can think you have it on the can uh, on your palette, but you have to judge it with what's on your canvas, when it's on your canvas. Let's see if that's dark enough. Darn it, come on. Get it in there. If not, I think I'm close. What I'm thinking, it might be too light. I'm going to add some of that up in the bank where the some of the canvas, the white canvas, is coming through. This is actually linen, I think. No, I'm working on canvas today. And I'm going to run some of this over here. All right. Let me get back, take a look, make some judgments. I think I was a little stingy for my tree. I think I could flush it out a little bit farther in a few places. Unfortunately, I don't have that mixture left. So I'm going to cheat and use the right value and use some of the stuff I mixed up for down here and 
bring some of that out to describe tree. I think the other thing I could do here, I'm not quite happy with, is this is too much of a tilt here. I think I'm going to get some of that original dark and bring it down a little bit here. And bring this up just a little bit here and try to level it out just a little bit. Let me see if I can get a good dark made. I want to work on those trunks just a little bit. So I used a blue, red, burnt sienna. A little bit of viridian to kill the red. And let's go back in and get some trunks. I have a lot of trunks over here, and I'm using my filbert, which usually does that job. If I just slow it down just a little bit, instead of rushing it so fast, if I just slow it down a little bit more pressure, I can get a good line in there with the right value, which I'm trying to do now on the right side. And again, I'm doing my little jagged lines and reestablishing some of the guys I lost. There's a lot of configuration going on down here. I'll probably have to do this again tomorrow when I get some overlay on this canopy to warm it up with some warmer colors. So, that'll at least give us a good structural thing here. Let me go back to these darks, add a little bit of this warmer color that I have here on the base and put in some of this bush thing here. Okay, how am I doing on time? Huh? Okay, we're doing pretty good. Let's get to the sky. So, if you have some ceruleum, put that out. If not, we can use Ultra. But uh, I'm going to be uh, using some uh, manganese blue hue, which is basically a Cerulean type fell up. Okay, I'm gonna get my number six flat here to use for the sky, and it's hopefully gonna be a light sky. So, white and my manganese blue hue. And slop this brush up both sides real, real good. And let's get this sky in here. So I go for the easiest areas first that I can get in without contamination. And now I'm starting to get a little bit more specialized and in getting into the contamination areas. 
pick up some contamination, just wipe your brush and your rag and get in, back in your mixture pile and remix. We can soften edges here later, but let's get these big areas in. Try to get them in without contaminating your sky color. Easier said than done. Okay, now let's get into softening these edges. So I can see here that I want to get closer to the edges so I just get into the area and I'm just working those edges with a, my flat brush. And yeah, they're contaminated, but I'm kind of rubbing these two together and softening the edge. And you can see it has a nice effect. I shouldn't be doing too much of this today because I'm going to be doing a lot of overlay warmer colors. But I've got a little time, so I'm going to soften these edges just because I'm motivated to do so. I want to kind of see what these softer edges look like. Oh boy, that's starting to look nice. Not bad for 25 minutes. Now tomorrow's balance day, or part two is balance day, and what I'm going to be doing is saying, okay, what is too dark, what is too light, what needs a more intense chroma color, and that's what we're going to do next. I can kind of already suspect that this is not dark enough here. Let me see if I can get some of that done today with some burnt sienna, raw sienna, burnt sienna, and a little bit of blue. A little bit of gray, blue, and let's see what that does here. Yeah, now we're talking darker. Do you see it right up in top here that's in the foreground area, it's dark right up in here and here and over on this side. I hope I made enough product. And I need some dark up in here too. Oh, let me make some more blue, red, burnt sienna, raw sienna. Touch of Viridian. It makes it too green. Let me throw back some blue in there. One more time. Dark here. That's too dark right there. It's scary getting this dark, but I'm really pushing it right now. And I better darken this area up just by some dry brag, drag across it like I'm doing right now. Just for the sake of getting some darker value in here. Oop, I just stuck it in the sky color. Let me see if I can bring back some gray now. So I mixed some gray into my sky color. Nice color.
All right, They're, my brush strokes are a little too bold, so I'm softening these hard strokes I put in just by running over the edges of them. All right, I think with that, we are coming up to time and I want to get back. I see this, but basically we have done a block in. And we have covered all this canvas with paint and got the shape in the right place. And I think the shape's good. And I'm taking a pretty good stab at the foreground. These are my base values down here in the canopy. I'll be putting stuff on top as well as the bottom too. But I think as I stand back, my value is a little bit better now than where I was just a few minutes ago in the foreground. So make sure that foreground is dark. And uh, I think you'll be a step ahead when we get into part two. All right, uh, with that, I'm going to bring part one block into a close. Thank you so much for being here today. I think part one is on YouTube and Uscreen, and uh, part two and three will be on Uscreen exclusively. So thank you so much. We'll see you in part two. Bye-bye.